Am I the asshole for telling my kids that the house is my property and I won't use it to pay off their debts? My heart sank as I watched my children walk out of the house in anger. The house that was once filled with laughter now felt empty and cold. My mother's house, the place where we had shared so many memories, good and bad, had become a source of discord in our family. I'm Robert, a retired man living in a small town in America. My three children, Emily, Mark and Sarah, are all grown up and have graduated from college. I have always tried to support them in every way I can. When they went to college, I paid for their books and living expenses, but their tuition was their responsibility. I was always proud of my children. Emily, my eldest daughter, was intelligent and ambitious. She studied law at a prestigious university, hoping to become a successful lawyer. Mark, my oldest son, was a dynamic and sporty guy. He studied business at a renowned university, wanting to be a successful entrepreneur. Sarah, my youngest daughter, was a gentle and sensitive girl. She studied art at a prestigious university, with a passion to become a talented painter. I always believed that education was the key to a better life. So I encouraged my children to pursue their dreams, even if it meant taking on a substantial student loan debt. Emily and Mark chose expensive universities and made little effort to save money. They often traveled, ate at fancy restaurants, and bought expensive things. Sarah, my youngest daughter, studied some courses at a community college to lessen her financial burden. She was always thrifty and knew how to manage money efficiently. My mother recently passed away, leaving me a house worth around $500,000. The house held dear memories of my youth, where we had lived through so many happy and sad moments. I decided to sell the house to use part of the money for a big vacation and the rest for my retirement fund. I wanted to enjoy my last years to the fullest after many years of hard work. I invited my children to see the house before selling it. They were surprised by the value of the house and expressed their desire to receive money from the sale to pay off their student loans. Dad, I owe a lot of money on student loans. This is an opportunity for you to help me get out of this debt, said Mark with an angry tone. I know you're struggling, but this is an inheritance from your mother and she wanted me to use it, I tried to explain. If I use the money to pay off your debts, I will lose most of my assets and won't have enough to support myself in retirement. The argument escalated, and my children became increasingly angry, claiming I didn't care about their financial difficulties. They demanded that I pay off their student loans, but I refused. You're selfish. You only care about yourself. Emily shouted, I tried to remain calm. You'll get your inheritance when I die, but right now I need the money to live and retire you don't understand. I owe a lot of money, and I'm struggling financially. Sarah said with tears in her eyes, I felt heartbroken to see their disappointment and anger. I always tried my best to raise them, but it seemed I had failed. I've already helped you a lot. I've paid for your books and living expenses throughout your college years. I can't keep taking on your responsibilities forever. Dot, double quotes dot in the end. The argument became heated, and my children left the house in anger. They wouldn't talk to me and expressed their deep disappointment. I felt heartbroken and lonely when my children shunned me. However, I still believed I had done the right thing to protect my financial future. I reflected on how I had raised my children and wondered if there was anything I could have done differently to help them understand my decision. I remembered their childhood days when they were still small, innocent, and adorable. I gave them all my love and care. I taught them lessons about morality, kindness, and honesty. I always hoped those lessons would help them become good people, people who would benefit society. But it seemed I had made a mistake. My lessons hadn't helped them understand the value of independence, self-reliance, and responsibility. They still relied on me, and when I refused to help them, they became angry and blamed me. I felt very disappointed and sad. I had tried my best, but it seemed I couldn't raise my children to be adults who could be independent and take care of their own lives. After some time, I reached out to my children and invited them back home to talk. I explained once again 
why I couldn't split the inheritance right now. Dad, I know you're trying to protect yourself, but I can't understand why you're not helping me. I owe a lot of money, and I'm struggling financially, said Mark with an angry tone. I suggested finding other ways to support them, such as helping them create a financial plan or finding other sources of assistance. But it seemed all my explanations and efforts were in vain. The relationship between me and my children hadn't improved. They were still angry and dissatisfied with my decision. Our family was not as harmonious as before. I felt I had done everything I could, but I still couldn't get their agreement and reconciliation. I started seeking advice from friends and loved ones. I hoped that by sharing and receiving their feedback, I could find the best solution to this situation and rebuild my relationship with my children. My heart was heavy, unsure of where our family's future would go. Would these conflicts be resolved, or would we remain estranged as we are now?